Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us during this live education webinar with our team at Masson's Healthcare in Willowwood. Today's education topic is Introducing the Medical Foot by Willowwood. We have Gyro Blumenthal, who you can see on the screen, who is the Managing Director for International Markets from Willowwood presenting. We also have Bill Mamaris, our Senior Education Manager at Masson's presenting. There will be a discussion about the design and features of this new foot, insight into its commercial conception at Willowwood HQ, and the differences to other prosthetic foot models in the Meta family. In a moment, I'll hand over the stage to Gyro, but before I do, just a few housekeeping notes. Please keep yourselves on mute during Bill and Gyro's presentation. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type these in the chat box. There will be an opportunity for a Q&A session I'll be chairing after the presentation. And for those who are signed into our meeting now, our webinar now, if you have other attendees in front of your computer screen with you, could you please list their names in the chat? This way we can capture all audience info. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll now hand over the stage to Jaro. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Mathens, for putting this webinar together. I hope you can see my screen at this point. Just please just confirm that I believe you all can see that, right? So let me move to the next slide. So the webinar today will, will be talking about the whole Meta Feet family from Willowwood and how it was created, all the concepts behind it, and how we reach these four units that we'll be talking about today. But before I talk about the Meta Feet, I want to talk to you a little bit about the Willowwood I used to know. So a little bit on, on, on myself. You probably can hear by my accent. I'm not, uh, I'm not from the UN, US, I'm not from Canada, I'm not from Australia. I'm actually from Brazil, born and raised, but I got my education in prosthetics in the US and then did my whole career uh, as a clinician, as a prosthetist myself uh, in Brazil and mainly in international markets. And for more than 20 years, I uh, drove international markets, especially in Latin America and in Europe for OSER. So the Willowwood that I used to know is probably on this picture that gel green liner that used to sell a lot and as OSER I used to sell against it. So once I had a chance to, to join Willowwood, the new Willowwood, first thing that caught me by surprise was getting to know that this old Willowwood that I used to know became more of this picture, a company that had not only the gel liners that we know about it, but that migrated or grew into silicone liners as well including smart temp liners that you are well aware in, in Australia and New Zealand, and also our own true seal liner, the liner with the fins, with the rings. So what's happening at Willowwood right now is a change of paradigm, a change of ownership. Willowwood has been in the market for 115 years, four generations of the same family, until a group of executives, including myself and a private equity uh, team, acquired uh, Willowwood, and we are slowly changing this company that used to be like a one-liner company to this new Willowwood that has all the sets of liners and now including feet. So how did, how did this change happen? Well, Willowwood used to outsource some of the feet that we manufactured with a company called Maxstride. And Maxstride is a specialized facility, specialized company that manufactures carbon fiber feet for many different companies, including Willowwood at the time. So from that relationship, we evolved to end up acquiring Maxstride, which is now part of the Willowwood group. And now we are becoming a company with all the liners and the feet that we need to provide an offer to our patients. Maxstride, as part of Willowwood, continued to manufacture some feet for other companies as part of the contract. But the Massa family is the first line of feet that we manufacture exclusively for Willowwood with a design that is so unique. And this is what Bill and myself will be trying to share with you in the next uh, few minutes. Okay? With that being said, let's go to the first uh, boot of the family. And I want to explain one thing that will be common for all the four feet that we'll be talking about today. 
Uh, all the feet are based from the same frame, the same chassis, the same body that is on this single piece carbon that you can see here on my screen. When I say single piece uh, car uh, carbon fiber, that means there's no hardware. There's no bolts, there's no holes, there's no uh, wrap to connect the upper and the lower frame from the carbon fiber. The interesting part of this uh, unique design called the unibody design is that everything that connects the higher and the lower uh, uh, fibers are actually two carbon fiber rivets on the forefront of the foot. So that creates a system that has a, a transition in energy without any hard stop. There's no dead moment on this transition of energy, getting a much lighter foot. And again, as I said, with no stop on this transition. So no holes, no screws, no wraps at the top and at the, at the front, just a smart design that allow this foot to work almost like a rocket chair. So the lower and the upper frame from the carbon fibers connect or change their connection point according to the phase of the gate. And we will show, you, we will show that to you in a video in a moment. Also, all those feet that we will be talking about today as part of the Meta Feet family, they are waterproof and corrosion resistant. So that's, I think, a very important feature for countries like uh, Australia and New Zealand. Very, very lightweight, again, because we don't have those uh, hardware uh, connected, connecting those two parts or two, two blades of the foot. And it has a 95% or higher of energy return from the transition at heel strike all the way to the toe up. It's rated up to 165 kilos, following the traditional nine categories that the industry uses to qualify and choose the right size and the right chart, the right category for your, for your patient. They all came in a 10 millimeter heel height and the sizes, again, following the industry pattern, we do serve from 22 to 30 centimeters right and left. So that's the basic that will be uh, used in all the feet that we'll be discussing today because all of them are built upon this unibody design, this same frame. The only thing that will change is the ankle feature in each one of the feet. So, let me try to move to the next slide. See? I think a few, a few other features are important to mention. All the feet have this split keel and the opening for the sandal toe. So again, combined with the waterproof and corrosion resistant, this make a unique combination under this kind of build height and this kind of weight, all of them. So the way it was created, it was a combination or addition to the family one at a time. The first one that was launched was the Meta Arc. Then we brought the Meta Shock and Shock X. Those Bill will have the opportunity to explain to you in a minute. And the final one was just recently launched was the Meta Core. As the name says, it's the core, it's the basic foot of the family, and I will explain how. On this transition, Bill will have the fun part because it's exactly the Meta Arc and the Shock X that has all those funny features on their ankle. And the Meta Core is the one that's going to be the solid, the basic one with all the basic uh, uh, features from the frame. So here we have a small preview of what will be covered today. The four feet from the family. As I said, I'll take care of the Meta Core, and then Bill will speak with more details about Meta Arc, Meta Shock, and Shock X. But mainly, I can tell you in advance already on the Meta Core, they're a very smooth rollover. It's a carbon fiber foot made for patients from K2 to K4 users with a very, very low build height and weight. And I'll go into details as we go. So hopefully you can see on this, on this video, on this animation, what is happening here. You probably can see on my arrow, this little window, this little, little gap that you can see between the upper and the lower part of the foot. This is the unibody design in action, and more or less, as I explained, like a rocket chair. The only part that really physically connects the two parts of the foot is two carbon fiber rivets 
here at the forefront. Everything else, it changed its point of contact according to the moment of the gate, from heel, heel strike to mid stance to toe off. This is a very simple but smart design that uh, uh, optimized all this energy return during the, the phases, the different phases of the gait, and again, without adding any weight to the foot. It's unique, and it's called the unibody design. So what, was, what makes it so unique? We made a, a, a comparison between our Meta family with seven different competitors, and on the same category, and talking about carbon fiber feet from different manufacturers. Basically, what we did, we compared like pound to pound using the same build height, how much energy return each one of those foot would have on the toe and on the heel. And again, because of the very low build height that the Meta feet have, the energy return on both heel and toe was absolutely superior than the, the majority of the comparisons that we used, always comparing build height with build height. Of course, it's not fair to compare uh, a foot that has that kind of build height with a foot that has a much higher lever on the, on the frame that is made for sh uh, uh, shorter stumps or for different shapes. So for this specific build height, which serves, I would say, 80% of all, all of our amputees, allowing, including mid to long transtibial amputees uh, uh, with mid to long stumps, uh, benefit from this kind of technology. It has one of the best energy returns, both on the heel and then on the toe. So here you have the design, how the Meta Core looks like. It has a titanium pyramid connected to the carbon fiber frame. And uh, again, it has the same structure. All the feet will be functioning the same way when it talks, when 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 we refer specifically about the foot, the frame, Metacore, very economic, very uh, uh, competitive, price-wise in the market for K2 to K4 users. Again, with 95 or plus energy return on their fibers, with no hard stop on the transition. Um, countries like Brazil in South America and, and I believe in in Australia as well. The fact that they are waterproof. It's very important as well as the corrosion resistance. When we remove the foot shell, the foot itself, the foot alone, has less than 500 grams for a size 25. So that's again very impressive. The combination of features between the lightweight, the energy return, and the competitive price it presents, being waterproof and energy re and corrosion resistant. So here you have a typical design for the specifications. The heel height is always 10 millimeters. Look at the build height, guys. It's only 10 and a half centimeters, 105 millimeters. That's all what it needs for our, our patients to be able to benefit from this uh, unique design. And as I mentioned before, probably one of the lightest foot that combines all these features mentioned before. This is the order information. Uh, following the standard on the on the industry, this is how you choose between uh, the nine different categories based mainly on the weight, and you also choose up on the impact level of your patient. And this will leave you on the chart to choose what is the best, what's the right category for this foot. Because of the this unibody design, we do not need to use uh, uh, heel wedges on the foot. I know that some processes. Uh, prefer or are used to do it with this design, you don't have to. But if you still want to do any, any further fine tuning, you can. But take my advice, try without any wedge first. If you choose in the right category, based on the impact level, activity level, and the weight, you will not need uh, those wedges. So with that being said, I think you have the basic about the meta core, and then I'll, again, I'll, I'll, pass it, I'll pass it over to, to Bill, who can take from here from us, okay, guys? Bill, I'll stop sharing so we have the chance to take control, okay? Sure, thank you, Jaro. Yeah, so hopefully the uh, technology all, all works here and I can <laughs> I can share my screen. Oops. Beautiful. Pop you over here and... 
hopefully the slideshow will work. So, all good, thank you. Yeah, and thank you, Jai, for that great introduction into you know, the meta uh, development as well as the, the, the new Willowwood, certainly a, a lot of changes in, in recent years. So we'll start by having a look at the meta arc foot. And yeah, this, this is certainly the most unique of, of the feet with uh, a, a polycentric, polycentric ankle mechanism that's, that's attached here to, uh, to the unibody design of, of the meta, meta family. So we know that you know, the real world is is different for for our patients. While we yeah you know, we do a lot of our fittings in clinic and perhaps venture outside if we have a mobility garden or some challenging terrain for our clients. Um, but you know, the real world is is not quite quite as flat. So every day our clients are having to navigate the these terrains. And just to add a little bit more to the story of the meta development, it, it was uh, did start with the research funding grant that you see here through the N NIH. And essentially, you see the the um, the project's specifications or requirement here to look at develop the, the development of a new prosthetic foot. Um, to closely replicate the range that the anatomical human ankle attains. Um, so that's what led to the development of, of the meta and, um, and particularly the arc, which as you'll see offers greater compliance to uneven terrain and will maintain the, the body weight inside the base of the base of support by the way that this polycentric ankle mechanism instantly adapts to uh, to the terrain. So in this animation, we see how the ankle pyramid is attached to the ankle base. And if we look inside that mechanism, you'll see these ankle cams. So this is a true polycentric ankle providing up to 12 millimeters of lateral displacement. So the amputee will will feel that uh, benefit when they start to weight bear on the ankle. And it's important here, you know, to, to a new amputee, it's, it's going to feel normal. But to an amputee who's perhaps accustomed to a, to a foot that does not have a polycentric ankle mechanism such as this, you know, we just need to give them the heads up and say, hey, you know, this will initially feel feel a little unusual. This ankle, this polycentric ankle is going to adapt as you load the prosthesis to maintain your um, your weight line over the base of support. So if we look further into this. Uh, this polycentric ankle. Um, this shows us what's what's happening inside. Um, so, and I can just hopefully pause pause this. Um, so, you know, it's not a single rotation. It's a true polycentric ankle controlled um, by the cams and some little bumpers, little bumpers here um, to dampen the the end point. Now this is just an obviously an animated visualization. Uh, the meta arc is not field serviceable, so it's not something that can be disassembled in the lab. This image here is purely just to give you an appreciation of what what's happening um, within this polycentric ankle mechanism. So this will provide a really smooth roll and gliding motion. Um, and as you see here, that once the uh, foot contacts the ground, okay, the, the ground reaction force will be maintained within the base of support, keeping the, uh, 
the, the socket or the proximal portion of the leg over the over the weight line. And we just have some videos here to illustrate uh, function of, of the meta arc. And you can see here just statically loading on on an uneven terrain there. You can get an appreciation for how much movement uh, there is in this in this ankle. And it is, as you'll see in the following videos, an instantaneous and a rapid ankle motion um, as the amputee is, is loading the foot. So here we, we see you know, stepping down um, onto some uneven terrain. And again, you can gain an appreciation for that instantaneous adaptation to the terrain. The next video here shows a couple of different surfaces. Um, so on this first video, again, that response to the, the angulation of that terrain. And all this leads to, to a higher socket comfort and more consistent socket pressures for, for the users. Um, and during the development of the meta arc and what we hear from you know, current users of this foot, you know, all the subjective feedback is that users have a marked preference um, for this foot over their, their previous prosthesis that, that did not offer that instantaneous adaption to, to the terrain. And final video here, again, walking down a slope, challenging terrain, Again, here the uh, ordering information that Joro uh, touched on earlier, each foot is quite specific um, with the nine categories and, and loading characteristics. So use these charts uh, to select the right category to get um, you know, the, the positive um, fitting results fr from, your, from your patients. The next foot is the meta shock and this is again a, a very lightweight foot and it's a super low build height we saw with the meta core it, it had a build height of 105 millimeters so here we have a very low build height of 138 millimeters with what we refer to as a multi-phase vertical shock absorber. And we'll explain that, that more in a moment. Um, so in, again, in terms of um, functionality, you know, comparing the build height to other shock feet on, on the market, this, this is the, the real unique feature, that very low build height. Looking further at this multi-phase uh, shock absorption with this, this cutaway view here, in this cross-section view, you can see that there's actually two separate bumpers. There's a, there's a top and a lower bumper. So on initial loading, that, that top bumper is first engaged, and as the impact increases, okay, the lower bumper is, is then engaged. Um, and that adds to the smoothness of, of the response. So again, this is what we call a multi-phase shock absorption, and it's a very smooth transition, which works in harmony with the, the unibody design of the meta feet. And we can see that here in this, in this video, how we achieve a total of 12 millimeters of compression, eight millimeters from from the shock unit itself, and five millimeters from the chassis of the the meta platform. So 
So the meta shock gives us that ultra low build height. The dual bumper design provides that that smooth tra smooth transition uh, in response to, to the loading. And this is a great foot for you know, any any active amputee, you know, whether they're they're just community sort of daily walkers or you know, more of an outdoor enthusiast. Um, this will give them great protection to protect their limb as well as great energy return. Ordering information here again, specific to, to the feet. So make sure you refer to these, to these charts um, as you're selecting the appropriate category. The next foot is known or is called the Metashock X. And this adds another dimension to the shock. We have the same build height of 138 millimetres. But now we're adding a multi-phase, to the multi-phase shock absorption, sorry, we're adding 40 degrees of rotation. So we're combining that multi-phase shock absorption with torsion. Um, 20 millimetres of torsion in each direction for a total of 40, uh, sorry, 40, 20 millimetres. I shouldn't, I've got millimetres stuck in my mind. 20 degrees is what I'm trying to say uh, of rotation to either side for a total of 40 degrees. A little bit of a flashback to the video we saw previously with the meta shock. Uh, so we continue to achieve that multi-phase shock absorption that we see with the meta shock. And we now add the torsion to that. As you can see here in this in this video, 20 degrees in either direction, either side of center for a total of 40 degrees of rotation. In this cutaway view, uh, you just see the yellow torsion uh, bumper there, which which permits that um, that degree of movement, uh, and it is progressive. Um, so you know, as that that bumper is is compressed, uh, the stiffness does increase, um, and again that leads to a nice smooth uh, ad adaptation of the torsion for the amputee. The, the X, you know, like the uh, shock, great for those outdoor enthusiasts um, who are, you know, on the uneven terrain, you know, challenging environments. This will give them, you know, the comfort and protection that they, they need in their activities. And the follow following chart here shows us the impact and toe stiffness categories. I've got a nice little video here of the Metashock X uh, with a, a client here, sort of kind of taking it through its paces, I guess, from this on flat indoor ground, um, gaining the benefit of the Meta platform and the the shock feature. And then venturing out into other activity, other outdoor activities.
just to highlight the, the waterproof and corrosion resistance that Jairo referred to earlier, that is common across all the four feet of the meta family. So in summary here, we have the meta family starting with the meta core. The unibody design common across all four feet, the core, the arc, the shock and the shock X. The core is the, you know, the, the entry level foot for K2 to K4 users, and then we're looking at the, the K3 to K4 users for the, the other three feet. Take note of the build height um, and, and the product weight. All these feet are, are extremely lightweight and, and the weights here are with, with the foot shell, all uh, waterproof and corrosion resistance and the sandal toe feature and split keel design that, that we touched on earlier. From a fitting and alignment perspective, this is common across the four feet um, and pretty common with, with you know, various um, feet in the prosthetic world. This is the alignment we're looking at um, from the sagittal one third, the length of the foot will get you through the center of that proximal adapter and half in, halfway um, from the posterior view. The meta feet are supported with a 36 month warranty on the uh, foot module and six months for the foot shell. And we do offer the 60 day trial period from the initial fit date. So you can confidently uh, order a foot and have 60 days to trial that foot on the patient from the initial fit date. Um, to to get the client's feedback. And finally, we do have a, a promotion at the moment that Massens is offering where the foot shell is included um, with all meta feet. So you will still order uh, the foot as on, on the ordering guidelines shown earlier with the uh, foot size category, etc., and the code for the foot shell. Uh, but the foot shell is currently included um, uh, in the in the meta foot price. Um, so I'll pass over to Simon here to um, address any any questions. Thanks, Bill, and thanks, Jairo, for that presentation. Um, now is a good opportunity for anyone to ask any questions um, you can type them in the chat or you're also welcome to unmute yourselves and ask so um yeah it's now the q a or the question and answer time um, opportunity for anyone to ask questions any questions anyone Oh, Jairo's put his hand up. Fire away, Jairo. Uh, just a few things that came to my mind while Bill was presenting, and uh, this could be helpful to the to the others attending the webinar. Uh, when I think about this family, the meta core is mainly plug and play. I mean, it's a foot with all the features on its frame, but there's nothing else that has to be prepared that just explained. It's literally plug and play. The meta arc, which is the next one in the family, is the one that is so unique that that one demands explanation and information for the user before he goes and gives the first step on it. 
my point is there is two type of users that could experiment and benefit the meta arc. The first time user, the guy that was just recently amputated, has no previous experience with any other foot. And until a couple months ago before the amputation, probably experienced having his uh, 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 own uh, ankle with all the inversion and inversion that we are used to have. And now he's tapping on a foot that gives back to him a similar function that his original ankle uh, had. The other type of patients is those that are, have already been used at some sort of solid angle, ankle, solid prosthetic foot ankle for the last years during his life as an amputee, and now suddenly receives the opportunity to try an ankle that has this inversion and inversion again. That is the patient that has to be set on the parallel bars and be explained by the prosthetist what, what he's about to experiment, what he's about to experience. So in that way, he prepares his mindset for a new extra uh, 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 movement that he didn't have for the last few years. And I don't want that first experience to be, I would say, weird. I want him to be aware and prepared to what he's about to experiment. On that way, his mindset is ready to say, wow, now I can feel this inversion and inversion back again, and I can see how it benefits. Otherwise, if without any instruction, he could maybe feel like, what's going on down here? What's this new movement and motion that I'm, didn't, I wasn't used to have anymore? So MetaArc is the one that needs instruction from the prosthetist to his patient before the first steps. When we go to the Shock and Shock X, the features on the Shock and Shock X are not as unique as the MetaArc. There are other feet on the market that already provide shock absorption and some sort of rotation. The uniqueness is the amount of shock absorption and rotation in such a low build height. So that's the plus that the shock and the shock X will offer. So I think this would be like my comments on the side to the formal presentation we just gave. I just hope this could be useful to you guys. Make sense? Thank you, Jaro. Yeah, makes sense. And in addition to Jaro's comments, uh, we do encourage any of you uh, listening and watching this. Um, if you have any patients you're unsure about and um, wanting to have a, a clinical discussion on suitability uh, with any of these foot models discussed today, just pick up the phone, email us. Um, we're very flexible in, in the methods of communication and we're more than happy to, to assist and um, guide and support you guys um, clinically and administratively as well. And Simon, I guess my last point would be definitely go ahead and take advantage of the 60 days trial period. Not every market, not every distributor offers that or honors that. So especially for the new ones, the Meta family is so new. So everybody that will start using those feet, we understand that it is like some sort of conversion to whatever yes. food they were used to do to use. So give it a try. Use the 60 day trial period and uh, see if I yourself. Uh, in, in real action, how, how it performs. It, it's worth it to try. Definitely. Uh, does anyone have any any questions um, for for us um, or, or Jaro or, or Bill specifically? Um, now is a good opportunity, um, but also after this presentation or after this session, you're also welcome to, to reach out with any questions. I have one in particular. Um, it's just to reinforce um, the build height of the the metacore foot model. Is it um, Bill or Jaro? Um, it's eleven around eleven centimeters. Is that right? The build height. Ten point five. To be even more precise, so it's, yeah. it's a oh, really thanks. low build height. And and again, when you have it on your hand, it becomes even more impressive. I have my iPhone yes. here, so you can have an idea in terms of proportion. Oh, good. It's really, really a low build height for this kind of energy return and feature that we just mentioned. And that you cannot feel the weight because it's on my hand, but it's absolutely impressive, especially if you have another foot from the same category on your hand and you compare side by side, it's, it's impressive how we managed to remove all this extra weight from the traditional hardware that come with the other feet that we sold with this uh, unibody design. Thank you. So it looks like there are no uh, further questions 
at this stage. I'll open the floor for another maybe 10 seconds or so to give uh, an opportunity for anyone else to ask any questions. Um, I may have missed this earlier in the presentation. Apologies, I was late in joining. Um, with okay. the inversion and inversion properties of the ankle, is there a risk to um, that movement being translated up the shaft and into the sockets and possibly causing pressure issues? Still, you want to address is, that? Oh. Go ahead, Jara. No, I mean, do you want to address uh, that? Uh, I, I just want to mention, I'm not sure if I understood uh, the, Nick, uh, the question, but uh, those features on the shock, on the shock act, and also on the meta arc, those are maintenance free. I just want to make sure that because we didn't cover that. So it's not hydraulic, it's not pneumatics, not something that you have to be concerned that this may liquid may leak out so all the features are on that on that uh, field system and on the meta arc it's pure mechanical just a beautiful design on those two half moon hinges again not hydraulic not uh, 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 pneumatic so there's no maintenance it's maintenance free and all the idea there is to absorb those pressures to avoid going all the way up to the socket to the residual limb so would be nice, maybe I can create in the a video in the future where the patient go down the ramp or that slope with a meta arc and with a regular foot. And we can see the difference in impact at the socket when the ankle make the adjustment and when there's a solid ankle and then the, the residual limb and the socket has to absorb all that uh, impact and all those different angles. Did yes, you have uh, yeah, anything to add, Bill, to that? No, I think that covers it. Just in terms of the, the no lubrication, as Jairo said, the, these are sealed uh, self-lubricating systems in, in the shock and the shock X. And there is, it's perhaps it's difficult to see on, on the foot, but there is like a, a wiper mechanism here that stops debris entering um, and keeps that piston clean. So they are yeah, sealed self-lubricating mechanisms that do not require any um, periodic or ongoing maintenance. Yeah. Thanks for the question, Hannah. Does that um, answer your question? Did you want any elaboration? No, that's great. Thank you. Okay. We still have some time, so if anyone else has any questions, um, please fire away. And Simon, if not, I just want to make myself available, and I'm sure Bill <laughs> and you will be at any time from the people at this audience or anyone that will see this webinar recorded later on to always reach out to you guys at Math and, uh, and you for sure uh, share those questions with us and we'll definitely get back to to the to the customer. Yeah. And another point I will mention um, when anyone has opportunities to trial any of these feet models, we always encourage any any feedback on on the experiences so we can um, you know log log that in and, and tally all those experiences up because that helps to uh, improve products in the future for sure. Okay, if there's um, no other questions in the meantime, um, I'll wrap the um, webinar session up and thank both Jaro and Bill for, for their presentations. Thank you again, and thank you everyone for being able to attend uh, this webinar session with us. Um, again, there are opportunities to trial any of the feet that have been mentioned um, in the Meta family. And if you need any clarifications on anything that's been discussed today, please reach out. Or if you have any new questions, please reach out to any of our team at Masson's Healthcare. Thanks again and have a good rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.